I just want to brief you on what CDPR is and why we have decided to collaborate with GCU. So because CDPR is a policy research and advocacy forum that draws on research and support from its various partners, including uh, the Institute of Development and Economic Alternatives Ideas, um, the Center for Research in Pakistan, um, SERP, and the International Growth Center, IGC, um, with their support and fed by their research as well as internal research that CDPR conducts, we carry out um, open and public uh, policy talks under the banner of the Lahore Policy Exchange. Um, we focus on different developmental themes, um, including firms, productivity, energy, environment, state, um, the political economy. And for the first time, CDPR has collaborated with the GCU uh, for this purpose. And we hope to continue carrying out these events regularly with not just GCU, but also other partners such as the Mehboob al Haq Center at LAMS. Thank you. Thank you. We are very honored to have a bunch of very uh, eminent and respectful, uh, respected panelists who will further discuss the topic today. Our first panelist is Dr. Atiya Inayatullah, who is former Minister of State for Population Welfare, also had been an advisor on population welfare, and President Emirates Family Planning Association of Pakistan. Today, Dr. Inayatullah will talk about what the demographic transition entails and what it means for Pakistan. Our second panelist is Mohammad Malik Bhulla, who is DG, Population and Welfare, and he will discuss youth employment prospects and skill development agenda of the current government. Mr. Jawad Qureshi, CEO of Punjab Population Innovation Fund, and he will discuss how the PPIF are focusing on reaping benefits from the demographic dividend. Ms. Noura Shimran is here with us, who is Director, Women Development Department, and she will explain the demographic dividend and challenges of halting population growth from the lens of women development. Last, definitely not the least, the moderator for today's panel discussion is Professor, Professor Dr. Asghar Zaidi, who is the Vice Chancellor, Government College University, and also an expert on population aging. Dr. Zaidi has also been a visiting professor at London School of Economics and a senior research fellow at University of Oxford. Over to you, sir. Let me uh, start by thanking Consortium for Development Policy Research. I mean, thank you so much uh, for helping us uh, start this partnership with Lahore Policy Exchange. Um, and we will look forward to contributing to this uh, uh, exchange of ideas, in particular those ideas which has an impact in the, on the policy and which uh, will guide policy making in Punjab. Um, let me also make one correction. Uh, we were expecting Mr. Amir Jan, uh, to, who is the Secretary of Population Welfare. He could not come. Then he, um, we thought Malik Bhullah would be coming, but unfortunately he could not come. Instead, he sent uh, Muhammad Akhtar, uh, who is our very proud Ravian. Uh, so we are very happy to have him and Ms. Uh, Afshan is also here. Uh, Dr. Afshan is uh, also a um, uh, former uh, alumni, an alumni of this uh, university. Uh, we are very happy to have uh, Norish Imran, um, who is stepping in for uh, Ms. Amreen Raza, who is the Secretary, Women and Development. Now the challenge is that, as we know, and for much too long, uh, our population policy has been focused mainly on halting population growth, reducing fertility rate, because we, from a large population base, to have such a high fertility, we cannot afford to continue have, to have that kind of uh, demographic patterns of, of births, high births. Um, so the country needed, undoubtedly, policies to change from high birth country to low birth country. Similarly, country is making a transition from high early mortality to low mortality and high life expectancy. That's in the other end of the age spectrum. But here we are talking about the younger age spectrum where kids are born and, and to some analysts, policy analysts, too many kids are born, especially in those families where 
they cannot afford to provide the right kind of human investment that we need to do in our country. But once kids are born, then uh, a phenomenon occurs which uh, Mr. Akhtar would, would explain in greater detail, that we have a bulge of, a youth bulge in our population, a, a good number of young children growing up to become working age population. And that becomes the challenge that do we provide enough education and employment opportunities to that uh, youth bulge that we call in demographic language. So there is, on the one hand, we are trying uh, our best to halt high population growth. Uh, on the other hand, those kids who are born uh, are helped towards better human capital, uh, human investment, so that they can become productive citizens of the country. So we have to balance these two policies uh, at the same time. My own transition from uh, South Korea to come to Pakistan could not have been more dramatic. In South Korea, we have been writing, and I've recently published a paper on South Korea's fertility rate, which has gone too low, below 1%. And that has created this uh, risk that the country's population would disappear over the next 50, 100 years, the, the, the demographics uh, is predicting. Uh, so the problem there is the challenge of improving fertility rate. Uh, rising from fertility rate. And one of the policy conclusion that is standing out from that is that if you reduce the cost of raising children, then women are more likely to have children. Families are more likely to have more children because the cost of raising children would be less. And this is because that cost include a, a good human investment that's why that cost is high. The reason the, that the cost is low here of rise, raising a child is one of the reasons why we are having a high fertility rate in Pakistan. So coming from Korea where cost of raising children was high and people, families were having less children to a country, my home country, where people are having lots of children because the cost of raising ch children are too low because they are not held responsible in the same way as Koreans do to raise their children in a, in a, in a, in a manner that they have become productive uh, members of the society. So putting emphasis on demographic dividend, re reaping the benefit of demographic dividend means implies that we need to raise the cost of the chil rising children. We need to put more investment towards their education, towards their health, and, and towards giving them meaningful employment. So we have got uh, uh, a panel, a very accomplished panel here to provide us their views uh, on, on these matters. In particular, I would like to push um, Dr. Ak Mr. Akhtar um, and, 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 and also uh, Jawad to give us a sense of what is the best way to move forward? What is government doing at the moment uh, to provide us the right kind of in investment in children? And, and what uh, private-public partnership, what is the uh, Punjab Population Innovation Fund doing uh, in, in helping our children, those children who are born, uh, to be more productive members of the society? We will also go towards Madam uh, Kia, wrong and what can we be done uh, to put this right uh, moving forward and and I will also be coming towards Norish, Norish Imran uh, to help us understand it because uh, when we talk about fertility the the onus is on on women um, uh, because they by for biological reasons but also for cultural reasons they bear the burden of 
having children ra and, and raising children, and very often uh, they carry the, uh, the utmost importance and responsibility of making them a decent human being, a productive and decent human being. So we'll be asking Norish to reflect on uh, the demographic dividend that is happening and the challenges of halting population growth from the lens of women and uh, women development. So let me start with Madam uh, Atiyah, Dr. Atiyah, uh, to give her presentation. Assalamu alaikum. I really look forward to today's interaction, uh, and the sim uh, and and I look forward to this interaction sitting here in Fazli Hussain's seminar room and hall uh, and looking at the generation of tomorrow. Uh, I can tell you that it is, gives the greatest pleasure that I have is to be able to interact with young adults who are the present and the future, if I may say so, of Pakistan. I want to thank the Vice Chancellor for facilitating this and to the honorable panelists, Assalamu alaikum to you all as well. We are talking today about the demographic transition and what it means for Pakistan. What I want to tell you is that in the time available, I will quickly talk about both things because we have got very distinguished panelists who will pick up what I have said and take it forward. Uh, there is, it is through a knowledge platform, and you all know what a knowledge platform is, that from the uh, 90s, there was this platform of renowned global economists, amongst whom the most famous are David Bloom and Williamson and Mason and such others. And they came out with, uh, they worked on Southeast Asia. And the good thing is that they didn't sit in America and did not research in America. They worked in Asia as well as in our society and environment. And they came up with this absolutely incredible formula, which is called the demographic transition. This is the incredible formula, which is called the demographic transition. Now, what is the formula? Next, please. In this formula, it is, please note, it's a very simple formula, but rapid and sustained economic growth plus sustained decline in dependency ratio due to fertility decline. Jo abhi, VC sahab ne baat ki, ki sirf fertility decline to hai, lekin dependency ratio bhi kam ho jati hai. And I'm, I, all of you as college students understand what I'm saying. Ab ek taraf to ye ho gaya, to formula kehta hai ke sustained economic growth ho or sustained fertility decline ho to aapko demographic dividend milta hai and the Asian economic miracle came about or ye in ki miracle shuru hui thi uh, 1960s onward or ye 1990 mein ye bade renowned economists ne ye theory di acha ab isme badi dilchasp baat bhi Na laiki hum sab mein hai, Asians mein bhi hai. And you have to know that this transition can be two things, a dividend or a disaster. Let us see where Pakistan is going, wo bhi mein abhi batati hoon. You see, what do you need? Yaha pe economic growth ke liye, you need very sound economic policies, and conditions. And in our third world countries, you need poverty alleviation, inclusive growth, inclusive development. And on the other side, the single most important uh, indicator is the fertility decline. Acha, ab wo to ho gaya. Ab ye fertility decline kaise hota hai? Can we have the next? In this case, stages of transition are not one of them. This is in four stages. And you will see that Pakistan has come here. Pakistan has come here in the last 15 years of the third stage. And I will tell you that these stages are in one to four, are complete in 50 years. Now, these four stages 
they come in it is one window of opportunity for a developing country or agar hum niche tak na pahunche jab birth rate or death rate equal ho jaye hamare uh, 50 years kya hai they are from 1998 up to uh, 2045 aise karke hai ji to humne ye dekhna main मैं जो कह रही हूँ इतनी सख्ती से कि अगर 50 साल में हमने नहीं कामयाब हुए तो फिर वी ब्लॉस दी अपॉर्चुनिटी अब ये मुझे बताएं कि कामयाब क्यों नहीं अगर अगर इन 50 इयर्स वी डू नॉट गेट दिस व्हाट फैक्टर इन पॉपुलेशन इमर्जेस दैट I won't question you all as yet because I think this is the first time you're talking about demography. but your vice chancellor can tell you that if we don't get down to birth and death rate being equalized in 50 years then you will create a proportion of old age population ye sare jo yahan hai na ye phir upar chale jate niche bhi dher ho jate upar bhi dher ho jate aur ye beech mein jo productive hai squeeze ho jate mulk ki tabahi ho jati hai and that is the end of the story and that is why i think it is extremely serious that we address this issue at this point what does it mean for pakistan uh, as i said we are in the third half and this window of opportunity must reach by 2045 2045 is the uh, end or where do we need to reach in birth rate the birth rate has to be replacement level fertility replacement level fertility aam faham zuban mein sirf ye hai hum do hamare do theek hai na ji that is replacement level ab aap jitne youngsters yahan baithe hain naujawan please understand this baat badi saadi hai agar aap is duniya mein do aaye hain to create the future और अल्लाह ताला की उम्मत को आगे ले जाने के लिए तो फिर आप मेहरबानी करके अपने दो ही छोड़ के जाएं। जब चार छोड़ के जाएंगे तो कौन उनको संभालेगा तो ये चीज़ बहुत ज़रूरी है दैट दिस इन 2045 पाकिस्तान हम दो हमारे दो एंड फर्टिलिटी ट्रांजिशन हो जाए कैन वी गो टू द नेक्स्ट प्लीज इसमें जी मैं स, uh, पिछला एक दिखाएँ इससे हाँ इसमें हाँ ठीक है ये हो गया ख़त्म हो गया अच्छा जी अब यहाँ मैं आपको बताना चाहती हूँ कि फैमिली प्लानिंग के लिए हमें क्या चाहिए ये आ, हमारे इंटरसेंसल पॉपुल हमारी सेंसस होती है सो so, इन 1998 जब लास्ट सेंसस हुआ है द ग्रोथ रेट वॉज 2.6 ठीक और वो डिक्लाइन हुई 3 3.1 से उस उन पंद्रह साल में 1998 में बर्थ रेट गिर चुकी थी इसीलिए हम हम इस ट्रांजिशन में आए थे हम 3.1 से 2.6 पे आ गए थे और टी एफ आर विच मीन्स टोटल फर्टिलिटी रिटेट वी डिक्लाइन फ्रॉम 69.9 चिल्ड्रन टू 4.1 चाइल्ड अब ये देखें कि और लोग कहते हैं कि ये फैमिली प्लानिंग वाले क्या कर रहे हैं इतना पैसा इतना प्रोग्राम इतना सारा कुछ ना लायक इन्होंने कुछ नहीं किया मैं आपको बताना चाहती हूँ ये शायद बाकी डिपार्टमेंट से कम ना लायक है इन्होंने आपको ये करके यहाँ दिखा दिया है कि 3.1 से 2.6 पे बर्थ रेट नीचे लाए हैं और उन्होंने ये भी दिखाया है कि टी यानी छः सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन बच्चों से फोर पॉइंट वन उसके बाद क्या हुआ उसके बाद सोलह साल सेंसस ही नहीं हुआ खैर से और जब दो हज़ार सत्रह में धक्का जोरी अवाम ने शोर मचाया तो वट डू वी फाइंड दैट द ग्रोथ रेट इज टू पॉइंट फोर परसेंट टू डे एंड प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज डिजास्टर ऑल द प्लानिंग was being done on 1.7 aap soche ki jitni planning aapki thi hukumat ki aur is mulk ki wo 2.4 pe population tha aur wo 
सेवन पे करते रहे अच्छा उसके बाद मैं आपको बताना चाहती हूँ वो जो मैंने आपको दिखाया था ना कि बर्थ रेट और डेथ रेट नीचे बराबर हो उसमें जो जवान तबका था जीरो टू फाइव दे हैड टू डिक्रीज फ्रॉम थर्टी फाइव परसेंट टू थर्टी वन परसेंट लेकिन इसी अरसे में आफ्टर द सेकेंड सेंसिस वो नहीं डिक्रीज हुए वो वहीं के वहीं तो मैं जी मुख्तर क्योंकि और भी स्पीकर हैं हमने आगे बढ़ना है मैं आपको सिर्फ ये कहना चाहती हूँ और आप सब ये जानते हैं चाहे आप किसी शोबे से हैं आवर इकोनमी टू डे इन पाकिस्तान इज ऑन लाइफ सपोर्ट डू यू अग्री विद दैट द इकोनमी इज ऑन और मैं आपको यहाँ फैक्ट्स एंड द पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ रेट इफ इट कंटिन्यूज टू बी टू पॉइंट फोर दिस इज कलेक्टिव सुइसाइड ऑफ ट्वेंटी मिलियन पीपल जी ये हम नहीं बर्दाश्त कर सकते और हमारा फर्ज है इन बच्चों के लिए ये फ्यूचर जनरेशन के लिए कि हम आगे चलें अब आप आगे चलें जी लेट्स सी द नेक्स्ट वन हाँ ये मैं दिखा रही थी एज पिरामिड यहाँ पे जब तक नीचे ये पिरामिड ऐसे है ना तो फिर बाद में पिरामिड ऐसे हो जाता है नीचे कम है और ऊपर ज्यादा लोग हैं अच्छा कैन वी गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन है अच्छा इसमें यहाँ पे मैं आपको दिखाना चाहूंगी दट ऑल सेड एंड डन यहाँ पे दीज आर द पॉपुलेशन एज को हॉट्स एंड इफ वी गेट द डेमोग्राफिक बेनिफिट वी विल हैव एनवायरमेंट सोशल economic political governance benefits we will uh, reduce the pressure on natural resources and we will be raise the size of workforce increase savings investment in human capital etc next we are this now what i want to talk to you about is what are we going to do with the youth bulge jo hamare paas is waqt hai हमारे 30, फोर्टी uh, परसेंट के करीब इस वक्त यूथ बेल हाउ डू वी मेक दैम इन टू एन एसेट थ्री थिंग्स एजुकेशन एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड एम्पावरमेंट आई कैन टेल यू वन थिंग एंड दिस इज अबाउट टेन ईयर्स गो जब हमने पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी में सर्वे कराई वो स्टूडेंट से जो बाहर निकल रहे थे और देवराउट इन दी सोसाइटी आफ्टर दैट और हमने कहा कि आप क्या करना चाहते हैं कहते हैं कि हम यूनिवर्सिटी से नहीं जाना चाहते और पूछा कि कि हम कोई एम फिल करेंगे कोई फलाना थैंक यू तो जब हमने ये पूछा कि भाई क्यों तो उन्होंने कहा नो अपॉर्चुनिटी सो विल यू प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट दीज थ्री थिंग्स आर इसेंशल फॉर यूथ एंड द एंड on the other hand you have to have fertility management family planning because that is the most important access to uh, poverty poverty alleviation ke liye ye bahut zaruri hai so ye cheeze main chhod rahi hu ye the, this these are all the things that we need to do with young people next pe aa jaye jo dc saab ne kaha what do we do sustainable development goals have to be devised and implemented within the framework hum bhule hue hain ki we signed on to those g the next food security and water stress is waqt is mulk mein do bahut aham cheeze hain food security ka issue or water stress and then i've come to the demographic dividend jiska maine aapko bahut kaha hai abhi and uh, uh, three and four of for that and but finally what is needed in this country hum log 18th amendment ki baat to bahut karte khuda ra isko devolve kare aur jo kaam karne hai district level pe kare district is the base jahan awam hai aur jab tak aap wahan nahi jayenge dekhiye hukumte to nahi bacche paida karte awam karti hai na so they have to be there and these are these eight or 10 points are जो आपने कहा कि वॉट इज द वे फॉरवर्ड एंड आई वुड ओनली लाइक एंड सिंसियरली होप दैट दिस सेशन विल इक्विप यू विथ न्यू थाट्स एंड गिव यू द स्ट्रेंथ एंड नॉलेज टू मूव फॉरवर्ड फॉर पाकिस्तान एंड आई डू एक्सपेक्ट आई डू एक्सेप्ट दैट नो वन कैन डू एवरी थिंग 
but everyone can do something and finally together we can do everything thank you may i now invite dr mohammad akhtar also who would also use the powerpoint slide to reflect on what do we understand by demographic dividend but in particular i would be putting him to the task of reflecting on what the current government is doing in terms of policies towards population uh, growth and policy policies towards um, uh, promoting demographic dividend promoting reaping uh, demographic dividend back in my playing ground कमेंट कॉलेज के बारे में मैं सर से एक जुमला शेयर कर रहा था जब भी मैं कॉलेज आता हूँ खाल मनाई का फंक्शन हो या कभी भी तो मैं वो जुमला ज़रूर बोलता हूँ शफाक साहब का कि ये वो दरसगाह है जिसमें सीन का लफ्ज़ वाफर है ये दरगाह है और दरगाह से लोगों को फैज मिलता रहा है मिल रहा है और मिलता रहेगा और आज का जो सेशन है ये इट सीम्स टू बी यू नो वेरी ट्रिकी वन बिंग स्टूडेंट ऑफ सोशल साइंस एंड being involved in the demographic scenario of pakistan and uh, after being uh, taught by mamatia who is sitting here uh, she just like you know tower of gc in the field of uh, population welfare as we are associated with this star she is guideline for us on these topics unke baad bolna mujhe acha nahi lag raha बट उनकी इजाज़त से मैं बस चंद एक गुजारशात हैं वो करूँगा नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू लर्न वट पॉपुलेशन इशू इज एक्चुअली मैम आज एक्सप्लेन इट आर वेरी यू नो माइन्यूटली गोइंग इन टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ द डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजिशन एंड डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंट आई कम लेट द लेटर पार्ट ऑफ माई प्रजेंटेशन इज ऑन डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंट बट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल how government is proceeding into it i would like to you know make a, a flash point of those because i don't have that much time to go into the details so the first thing which we did after the devolution as ma'am was telling ke 18th amendment ke baad jab ye provinces ka subject ho gaya to after that first thing was how to move forward to department ne apni punjab population policy banayi wo cabinet se approve karwayi hum us policy ko leke ab aage badh rahe hain Uh, उस पॉलिसी के तहत पहली दफ़ा ये हुआ कि पब्लिक सेक्टर डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम्स के तहत इसका डेवलपमेंट में फंड आया करता था इसको डिपार्टमेंट का कोई खास खदो खाल नहीं थे सर तो फिर हम एस एन ई पर शिफ्ट हो गए अब हम नॉन डेवलपमेंट पे हैं जिसकी वजह से गवर्नमेंट का एक रेगुलर फीचर बन गया और ये गवर्नमेंट की प्रायोरिटीज़ में शामिल हो गया उसके बाद आपको याद है कि चीफ जस्टिस साहब हैव टेकन अ सो मोटो एक्शन आर आफ्टर दैट दी हाइस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ पाकिस्तान काउंसिल ऑफ कॉमन इंटरेस्ट they have made some recommendations cci recommendations were made and all four provinces were bound to implement them because mujhe kabhi kabhi ye lagta hai ki population ek aisa subject hai jo provinces ka nahi hai sorry to say lekin sindh ki apni reservations ho sakti hain balochistan ki apni reservations ho sakti hain population ke hawale se unhe shayad jis tarah canada ko apni population ko uplift karne ki zarurat hai ho sakta hai ki unki requirements thodi different ho we need to understand all those geographical social and cultural norms which are contributing to it to us wajah se kyunki sare provinces devolve hone ke baad ek page pe nahi the to ye zaruri tha ki council of common interest mein is matter ko leke jaye जाए और तमाम प्रोविंस की ओनरशिप को रीगेन किया जाए जो कि डिवॉल्व होने के बाद एक तरह से हम लूज कर रहे थे इस सब्जेक्ट को समय ना तो आप पॉलिटिकल साइंस के सर जो हमारे दोस्त हैं उसको समझ सकते हैं द प्रोग्राम विच स्टार्टेड इन पाकिस्तान इज रेसिप्रोकल विद दी If you look at what what's going on in your Yubira, Yubira was an enlightened era and family planning was given some opportunity and there was a window and it started there. After that there was debacle there was you know we were in uh, doldrums in political histories to program bhi doldrum mein chala gaya islamization hui jaya sab ke daur mein program islamize ho gaya mohtarma aayi 1992 mein hum cairo chale gaye to agar aap apni political history ko population ke sath rakh ke study karenge to aapko government ki will नजर आती चली जाएगी एक बड़ी खूबसूरत इसमें स्टडी अगर आप इसको थोड़ा सा इसके साथ कोरिलेट करके सर एक स्टडी कराएंगे तो यू विल गेट वेरी यू नो गुड रिजल्ट्स और आपको पता चलेगा कि हमारा ट्रेंड क्या रहा है 
अब हम एस एन ई पे आने के बाद एनुअल डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम्स लेके आ रहे हैं हर साल ए डी पीज में पैसा ले रहे हैं और ए डी पीज के जरिए फ्रेंचाइजिंग ऑफ क्लिनिकल सर्विस का एक हमने मॉडल शुरू किया कि प्राइवेट पब्लिक पार्टनरशिप में किया जा सके जवाब साहब बैठे हैं हमारे सीनियर हैं सी ओ हैं पॉपुलेशन पंजाब पॉपुलेशन इनोवेशन फंड के दे आर डूइंग सम एक्सीलेंट इनोवेशन टू हाउ टू मार्च फॉरवर्ड देन वी नीड टू हैव अ मल्टी फैक्टोरियल अप्रोच यहाँ इस इंस्टीट्यूट के हवाले से सर एक सेंटेंस बोलूँगा देर इज़ अ रिसर्च विच हैज़ गिवन अस अ कॉन्क्लूजन एंड दैट कंक्लूजन इज़ वेरी मच इम्पॉर्टेंट दे सेड एजुकेशन इज़ द बेस्ट कॉन्ट्रोसेप्टिव यू नीड नॉट टू डिस्पेंस कॉन्ट्रोसेप्टिव टू द यूथ इफ यू एजुकेट दैम इफ अ गर्ल इन द एज ऑफ सिक्सटीन गेट्स मैरी ही हैव शी हैड ए A fertility period of 24 years. A university student, after I am Phil, if she get married, she have only 14 to 16 years of fertility. So we need a multi-sectoral approach. If we are doing, if Population Welfare Department and Population Innovation Fund is doing their job, but education sector is. Uh, not enrolling the students and not doing the work on higher education and if the health department is not contributing in uh, during the uh, in the gyni wards they are not making people advocate of family planning and they are not giving them the contraceptive from their stage it will be a futile effort if ma'am from women development department is not going for the uh, rights of women bill and they are not going to we are not going to legislate the lowest age of marriage for children what population will department will be doing alone it's all a futile effort we need a multi sectoral approach for that we have launched a multi sectoral population welfare program it's an adp and we worked on that and we will exceed from there now we have cci recommendation please next i'll try to wrap it up as quickly as it is i have already discussed with you your population policy next please we have a vision and vision i'll just read it out for you and it's a very good vision we want to work on that just need to implement it that the promoting prosperous healthy educated knowledge based society kitni khoobsurat baat hai but we need to bring or this is not possible unless and until we all are on same board which i have already mentioned all departments need to work on that if planning and development department was failed as ma'am have told we were working on 1.7 and the actual rate which reflected was 2.4 do ke badle do nahi aaye to kya masla ho gaya hamari sari planning dhari ki dhari reh gayi i always whenever i go to such sort of uh, institutions i always talk about one thing data 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 reliable data the biggest problem of pakistan is non availability of reliable data we have one pdhs we have mix and what pdhs and mix they have only few indicators of family planning which does not give you a true picture of the country for the interventions we need to have a data set reliable data set aapka arth koi ek ho gaya aapko pata hi nahi ki meri us pahadi ke upar kitne ghar the kitne young hai kitne boodhe hain kitne woh pahadi se utar sakte hain kitne nahi utar sakte mujhe kitni medicine bhejni hai this is how it is disastrous corona aaya hua hai hame nahi pata ki hamari kaun si population pocket ko kya chahiye hoga lack of data set let's work on that those data sets let's try to generate some reliable data source sets and i think this today's intervention is will be a hallmark of the if we from today onward if we decide that all the relevant university departments will help us out to generate those data sets i think there will be a valuable contribution from this side please next But these are the goals i'll not go into the details please thoda chaliye aage key priority areas which were set enhancing access to family planning services contraceptive commodity security i tell you लास्ट फाइव ईयर से सर हम पाक पंजाब में कॉन्ट्रासेप्टिव का स्टॉक आउट नहीं हुए जो रिक्वायरमेंट हमारे फैमिली वेलफेयर सेंटर या अदारों की है वी हैव डेवलप्ड सप्लाई चेन मैकेनिज्म थ्रू विच कॉन्ट्रासेप्टिव आर रीचिंग टू द लोअर टीयर और हम एक एक कॉन्ट्रासेप्टिव को ट्रैक कर सकते हैं विद द हेल्प ऑफ यू एस ए आई डी एंड पी पी आई एफ जैसे इदारों ने हमें ऐसी सपोर्ट दी है कि वी हैव डेवलप्ड अ वेरी गुड सिस्टम विच इवन यू कैन मॉनिटर ऑन अ वेब बेस्ड सिस्टम इट्स अ वेब बेस्ड सिस्टम यू कैन गेट इन्फॉर्मेशन वेयर आर कॉन्ट्रासेप्टिव आर वेदर इट्स इन ट्रांसपोर्टेशन स्टेज वेदर इट इज इन द कम्युनिटी वेदर इट्स इन आर फैमिली वेलफेयर सेंटर वेदर इट्स इन फैमिली हेल्थ क्लिनिक so this is what we are doing we are adopting multi sectoral approach strengthening of pwd monitoring and evaluation without monitoring you cannot get desired results next please this is so motor notice of supreme court which i have already mentioned please next next 
next these are only eight areas which i'll mention with you and then i'll go to demographic dependent only for two minutes uh, there's there are there have been sir two forces uh, national task force at national level and provincial task force at all provincial levels which have been established and their provincial task force uh, secretariats have been developed to implement the decisions of the supreme court and council of common interest then universal access by universal access we mean that uh, any person in any street if you want to access contraceptive we can get from the shop from our service delivery outlet from ppif resource from any ngo resource so we, universal access to a on which we are working finances the government has committed to double the fund for population welfare which they are working definitely on them legislation we are working on two or three important bills one is premarital counseling second that is in pipeline very much in pipeline then our minister has um, also announced that they are going to have a scheme for the lactant mothers to support them those labor women who cannot feed their children they will the government will give them some stipend for uh, you know to raising them up and uh, i tell you this breastfeeding is the natural one of the natural uh, birth spacing because when you go for a two years of um, uh, um, breastfeeding then it naturally you have you will develop a gap it's not that it, medically speaking not not medically speaking but if you are committed to two years of lactation then third baby we will plan in the third year next then uh, curriculum and training advocacy and communication which i deal with mostly media campaigns and blah blah we are doing on that with full z synthesis and i assure you that the last thing is sport of ulama for which i tell you people say ki ulama aapke saath nahi hai sir humne pakistan ke tamam wafaqul mudaris ko ikattha kiya unke saath baithe sitting ki and they said we are with you on this issue there is no more barrier in this that ulama are not with us this is somewhere where you know jahan pe umuman hamare yahan kuch barriers hain wo tamam ulama iske upar mutafiq nahi hain nichle level ke upar kuch shayad hame problems ho but mostly they are with us next please ab chalte chaliye mujhe isko khatam karna hai ek main aapko next chalte jaiye please main aapko rokunga tab ruk jaiye ga next 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 that's it ruk jaiye just one slide which i have to share with you and then um, i think I, it will be over to uh, my next there is a reduction in family size and then enhancement in life span ma'am ne aapko ek dikhaya tha pyramid this is the original shape of pyramid agar aap log dekh sake ये हमारी एज स्ट्रक्चर है कि बच्चे इधर हैं और बूढ़े इधर हैं अब जब बूढ़े हमारे पास जब उन्होंने जिस डिजास्टर स्टेज की बात की वो ये है ऐसी है मैम कि जिसमें आपके पास जो लेबर फोर्स है वो कम होती चली जाएगी और जो कमाने वाले हाथ हैं वो कम होते चले जाएंगे और ना कमाने वाले हाथ ये छोटी एज में और बड़ी एज में दोनों जगह पे मौजूद होंगे और होगा क्या इकोनॉमिकली सारा स्ट्रेस दरमियान वाले पीरियड पे आ जाता है दिस विंडो ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी विच मैम वॉज मैंशनिंग देर आर फोर थिंग्स लेबर सप्लाई ह्यूमन कैपिटल सेविंग्स इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नो बेनिफिट ऑफ डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंट द इकोनॉमी इज एबल टू टेक इन एंड प्रोडक्टिवली एम्प्लॉय मोर वर्कर्स लेबर सप्लाई जब आपके पास यूथ बल्ज बढ़ गया तो अब आपने फैसला करना है कि आपकी यूथ आपकी लाइबिलिटी है या एसेट है आपकी यूथ आपके लिए डिजास्टर है या डिविडेंड है आपकी यूथ आपके लिए अपॉर्चुनिटीज लेकर आएगी या आपके लिए मिसाइल पैदा करेगी अब ये कैसे मुमकिन है आखिरी जुमला बोल के मैं इजाजत लेता हूँ और एक ही तरीके से मुमकिन है जो मैं पहले कह चुका हूँ जो पहले रिक्वेस्ट कर चुका हूँ और जिसकी तरफ हम पहले तो जो कर चुके हैं वो है मल्टी फैक्टोरल अप्रोच एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट हैव टू कम फॉरवर्ड प्लानिंग एंड डेवलपमेंट हैव टू कम फॉरवर्ड हेल्थ हैव टू कम फॉरवर्ड इनोवेशन फंड हैव टू कम फॉरवर्ड एंड देन जब हम सारे मिलकर पॉलिसी देंगे और प्रोग्राम देंगे सिर्फ पॉलिसी नहीं policy and program for this youth bulge inshallah this will be an asset for us as the other south asian economies have shown us and ma'am ma i have already mentioned it thank you very much so nice of you thank you
Ms. Norish Imran to reflect on, on the issues from her own angle. Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. I am representing Women Development Department here. I am the director. I would like to say that we strongly believe that women empowerment is the key factor in order to reap the benefits from demographic dividend. Why I am saying this? It's because we know and we believe that an empowerment and an empowered and a strong woman is aware, she is empowered, she is enlightened, and she can plan for her family, she can plan for her family's future, she can create a balance between her work and her family life. I would like to tell you that uh, Women Development Department is focusing on a group of individuals who are mostly, majority of them are uh, less literate as compared to men. They are having low self-esteem. They are subjected to violence. Then they have, uh, they have low opinion. They don't contribute much into the political and social uh, opinion in the society. So uh, what are the major hurdles and what we are working for? I would like to tell you a few facts and figures. Women, co women comprise 49% uh, of the total population, whereas only they contribute in 26% in the total labor force. This is because um, most of their work is undocumented. Then I would like to tell you that one out of three women in Pakistan are subjected to violence. This violence means uh, domestic violence and the harassment at workplace. So in order to uh, make women contribute and uh, reap the benefits of a demographic uh, dividend, uh, we need to bring them that confidence that they can contribute in the financial, uh, you know, they can help to contribute in the financial fund of their homes and they can be, uh, they can actually feel confident, they can actually feel empowered about themselves. But this is not an easy thing to do because there are huge challenges involved. First challenge is, is that empowered women or uh, making a woman financially independent is a cultural shock for the society. This is actually rebellion against the norms of the society. Then female education, particularly higher professional education is discouraged in our society as yet. We are mostly focusing on the rural population which is actually uh, the majority in Pakistan. Then the women who come out of work, for work, they are uh, facing harassment at workplace and plus the domestic violence. According to a World Bank report, if we are able to eradicate uh, the violence against women, it would increase our GDP up to 30%. This is because a woman who is subjected to violence, her production at work uh, is lessened, then it has huge impact on his, her household. Her children are subjected to psychological problems. Now what the Women Development Department is doing in this regard, uh, we are actually having a, a multi-sectoral and multi-pronged approach in this. First of all, uh, we are uh, launching a huge mass awareness campaign in all the districts of Punjab. We are going to engage district administration and we are actually engaging the lady health workers. We are engaging the primary school teachers in this and we are going to tell women what are their rights, which are the, which are the laws which are already being passed by the parliament for their protection. We, will, we are going to tell them what are the, law, what, what are the uh, laws for domestic abuse, which are the, which, what, what is the act of anti-harassment. So if they are subjected to harassment, they can actually get some relief. We, are, uh, we have a helpline, a, a toll-free helpline 1043, which actually very less people know that uh, it is uh, available for every woman in Punjab that she can call and she can report if she is facing any sort of problem like domestic abuse, like harassment at workplace, like if she is facing any issue regarding her inheritance right, she can report that and we can facilitate her. Other than that, we are working on uh, gender mainstreaming. 
which is, I think, a, a, a much desired step on this level. We are involving parliamentarians, we are involving public offices, international organizations, civil society, and also corporate sector. But need is actually to fill the gap because the women we have right now, they uh, do not have, most of them do not have professional degrees and they do not have skill. Still, they want to work. They have the will to work because they want to contribute to the society and to their own households. Now, how to uh, bring them back into the stream, in the working stream? So we have thought that we should uh, actually work on the vocational development, vocational skill development of those women. And for that, uh, we are working on their trainings. We have engaged corporate sector in this regard, and they have actually uh, told us that this is the relevant trainings they want. So we are going to train those women accordingly, because the main problem we are facing, that the vocational trainings we are giving to people right now, they are not relevant to the market much. So we are actually training women according to that. And other than that, uh, we are pleased to inform you that there is a bill which is actually uh, approved by the cabinet. This is a bill for home-based workers. That uh, because our cottage industry had suffered much because the middleman is taking all the advantages and the women who are working from their homes, they are being subjected uh, to mass exploitation. So uh, after this bill, uh, we, are, we are going to register each and every home-based worker and we'll be uh, providing them relief and uh, exhibiting their, wor their work, in, not only in Pakistan, but also worldwide. So this is, uh, these are the small steps the Women Development Department is doing to um, empower women, giving them confidence, giving them hope, and uh, actually making them aware of their rights of, uh, and enhancing their self-esteem so that they are capable of uh, having their own opinion about their own uh, plans, uh, how they want to plan their family, how many kids they want to have, how they balance their work life and their family life. So actually these steps, because this is something which is not going to uh, you know, have impact overnight, it will take time. Always uh, such sort, sort of uh, uh, issues, they need time because it's not a process of revolution, rather an evolutionary process. So uh, with time, uh, we believe and we hope that uh, efforts of Women Development Department will reap benefits for demographic de de uh, dividend uh, you know, benefits. Thank you. One of the estimates you put that GDP will rise by 30%. Uh, we're not talking here just for moral grounds anymore is that these are economic grounds uh, for women empowerment in our country. Let me invite uh, Jawad Saab. Uh, many things have been done in which the complexity and enormity of the challenge has been established that uh, what our situation is. So PPIF is a section 42 company and we do this we try and do a top up on what the government or the uh, administrative department or population welfare department is already doing. So what we do is that we go and in, uh, engage with the private sector. Uh, we identify critical areas of intervention. Those areas that we feel because of our secondary research and uh, secondary data available, uh, we, uh, we have a very uh, uh, high quality board available, we talk about them and we have their guidance. We identify our areas of intervention and we call out the call rollout. After the call rollout, the best faculties that are available in the field, we uh, engage with them. We have a management which is professional. They thrash out those ideas. After those ideas, we shortlist them. हम उसको बोर्ड के पास लेके जाते हैं और उसके अंदर अगर हमें अपनी ट्रैक्शन नजर आए तो फिर हम उन आ, उन आइडियाज को आ, रोल आउट करते हैं फील्ड के अंदर सरे दस्त हमने अब वी आर इनटू आर थर्ड साइकल ऑफ एक्सेक्यूशन 2016 के आखिर अवायल में हम आखिर में हम बने थे और देन there was a lot of cloud over uh, the fate of Section 42 companies which thankfully now is uh, is dissipating. So in that, our focus is on two or four things. We believe in tangible change. There is a relentless focus on monitoring and evaluation. Change, jo hai, we have two PhDs uh, of economics on our board. And whenever we take a project that, that needs to be rolled out to our, to our board, so we need to convince our board about its uh, sustainability. 
तो बहुत सा हमने जो एग्जामिन किया या स्टडी किए हैं इंटरवेंशन वो हमने देखा कि ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ इंटरवेंशन तो वो कुछ पॉजिटिव रिजल्ट डेमोस्ट्रेट करते हैं बट आफ्टर द आफ्टर द पीरियड ऑफ इंटरवेंशन दैट दो रिजल्ट प्लमेट so there is a lot of focus on on coming out with sustainable solutions ab vice chancellor sahab ka hukum hai ki wo mere paas time kam hai and i want to broach on skills as well so i'll keep it very very basic i'll just give you a birds eye view to ab hum usme ye kar rahe hain ki humne do jo phir humne areas of intervention hamare wo hain jo ke worst indicators hain art zile azla punjab ke udhar hum jaake kaam karte hain हमारा काम करने का जो एरिया ऑफ इंटरवेंशन है दैट इज द एरिया जहां पे सरकार की इंटरवेंशन नहीं है एंड यू विल बी सरप्राइज टू नो एट लीस्ट टू एट लीस्ट सम पार्ट्स ऑफ द ऑडियंस दैट इट इज इट इज एट लीस्ट हाफ ऑफ द हाफ ऑफ द प्रोविंस इज अनकवर्ड विद एनी गवर्नमेंट फुटप्रिंट्स डिस्पाइट एंड इन स्पाइट ऑफ ऑफ ऑल द एफर्ट्स दैट द गवर्नमेंट इज इज मेकिंग सो वॉट वी ट्राई एंड डू इज गो एंड आइडेंटिफाई दोज एरियाज एंड टेक आर इंटरवेंशन इन दोज एरियाज हम उसके बाद जो जिस पार्टनर के प्रोस्पेक्टिव पार्टनर के साथ काम कर रहे होते हैं उस पार्टनर को हम एक्सप्लिसिट टारगेट्स देते हैं कि उन्होंने कॉन्ट्रसेप्टिव प्रिवेलेंस रेट इतने अरसे में इतना बढ़ाना है और अगर वो ही वो और इस तरह के हमारे मतलब वो फर्टिलिटी रेट इतना बढ़ाएंगे दे आर ऑल प्री डिटर्मेंड डिफाइंड पैरामीटर्स दैट दे नीड टू कंप्लाई विथ दे हमारी मॉनिटरिंग जो है वो थर्ड पार्टी होती है बेसलाइन हम इंडिपेंडेंट करवाते हैं प्रोसेस मॉनिटरिंग इंडिपेंडेंट करवाते हैं एंड लाइन इंडिपेंडेंट करवाते हैं और पे एज यू परफॉर्म डिस्पर्समेंट लिंक्ड इंडिकेटर्स होते हैं इफ दे हिट देर इफ दे आर हिट देर टारगेट्स दैट हैव ऑलरेडी बिन Uh, agreed with them they will be paid otherwise they will be penalized for lack of performance abhi tak aur hum ab usme we were a very young and nascent company when when all this uh, uh, section 42 uh, circus started to humne us apni limitation ke bawajood ye faisla humne ye dekha ki hamare aise kaun se partners ho sakte hain ki jinke sath hum synergize karke apne footprint ko augment kar sakte hain so currently i'll i'm happy to report that we uh, have gone to district level we are working with uh, uh, the bisp aur hum rahim yar khan mein unke sath ek district level intervention karne ja rahe hain jo ke jisme dr sania nashter herself is taking a lot of interest and we believe that uh, wo koi 80000 bis beneficiaries hain rahim yar khan ke aur unko hum ek uh, voucher de rahe hain uh, fp uh, fp intervention ka jisko wo ja ke recoup kara sakti hain from प्री डिटर्मिन सेंटर्स और जहाँ से हमारा ये ख्याल है कि अगर ये हमारा आ, हमारी ये इंटरवेंशन अच्छे से काम कर सके तो वी कैन वेरी ईजली टेक इट टू पंजाब लेवल वेरी 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 क्विकली बिकॉज इट्स बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स शेयर डिज़ाइन एंड वी कैन गो टू अदर अदर डिस्ट्रिक्स इज वेल ये तो हो गई बात कि जो पी पी आई एफ का मैंने मुख्तर मुख्तसर सा अर्ज किया आपको कि पी पी आई एफ क्या करने की कोशिश कर रहा है ओवर एंड अब the what what the department is doing and the department is doing some fantastic work as well ab jo dusri baat sir ne ki main chief operating officer tefta ka raha hu koi 4.5 saal and from from that lens i can tell you that isme jo training hai na wo training hame thoda sa apna culture training ka tabdeel karna padega because hame us waqt bhi sarkar se target mil gaya ki ji do log 2 million logon ko train karna hai growth strategy ke hawale se अब वो जो दो मिलियन लोगों को 2013 से 2018 तक ट्रेन करना था उन 2002 मिलियन लोगों का आफ्टर दैट एक्सपायरी ऑफ फाइव इयर्स क्या बना वॉट ट्रेड वर दे ट्रेन एंड वेदर दैट दैट क्रैश ट्रेनिंग वॉज अ पार्ट ऑफ द सोल्यूशन और एक्चुअली अ पार्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज वेन यू आर ट्रेनिंग सम बडी यू आर रेदिंग देर एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ गेटिंग वर्क सो द ओनली फोकस वॉज on providing training rather than providing rather than tagging tagging it to employment one thing that i that we tried to do at efta at that time was that we talked to uh, all the leading industries aur humne unko ye kaha tha ke we will create a happy marriage if you will between efta institutes and uh, and those leading industries और उसका जो रैशनल था वो ये था कि अगर वो जो लीडिंग इंडस्ट्रीज हैं जिनकी जिनकी प्रॉक्सिमिटी में ये टेफ्टा के इदारे काम कर रहे हैं अगर वो उनको ओन कर लें और अपनी मर्जी से उनसे ट्रेनिंग करवाएं करिकुलम अपनी मर्जी का उनसे पढ़वाएं और उनको वो 
अपनी मर्जी का करिकुलम पढ़वाने के बाद जो प्रोडक्ट हम उनको तैयार करके दें द इंडस्ट्री शुड ऑल्सो हैव दियर स्किन इन द गेम बाय बाय हैविंग एन इनकम्बरेंस ऑन एम्प्लॉइंग प्रोडक्ट दैट वॉज सच क्रिएटेड तो उसके लिए हमने ये सोचा था कि जी ट्रेनिंग शुड बी डिमांड ड्रिवन स्किल्स ट्रेनिंग शुड बी डिमांड साइड ड्रिवन रादर देन सप्लाई साइड ड्रिवन और उसके अंदर भी जो हमारे एक और हमारी सिस्टर कंपनी है पंजाब स्किल्स डेवलपमेंट फंड वो भी उसी तरीके से काम करती है कि दे दे गो एंड दे दे गिव आउट फंडिंग टू ट्रेनिंग सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स हु आर प्रोवाइडिंग इफेक्टिव डिमांड साइड ड्रिवन ट्रेनिंग्स एक और मेरी जो आता है आई मीन आई मीन लाइक ट्वेंटी फोर्थ ईयर ऑफ माई सर्विस इन सर्विस ये इसमें हूँ मैं अब सिविल सर्विस में मे, मेरा मेरा जो एक जो ऑब्जर्वेशन है जब बाकी लोग बात कर रहे थे मैम बात कर रही थी सर बात कर रहे थे मैं ये समझता हूँ कि जिस तरी इट और इट नीड्स टू बी अ कलेक्टिव इट नीड्स टू बी माइंड सेट चाहे उसमें हमने डेंगी को डिफीट करना हो चाहे हमने करोना वायरस को डिफीट करना हो चाहे और कोई भी चीज़ हमने करनी हो ये पॉपुलेशन का इशू हो या और कोई सोशल इशू हो वी नीड टू हैव अगर आप ये चीज़ आई कैन टेल यू विद रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी कि अगर गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट इक्विप्ड द गवर्नमेंट कैन नॉट बी योर एंड ऑल एंड बी ऑल द गवर्नमेंट कैन बी अ स्टिमुलेटर द गवर्नमेंट कैन बी अ फेसिलिटेटर बट अगर आप सब बरए मेहरबानी आप जो यंग इधर साथी बैठे हैं इन माई डॉट इज हेयर इज वेल सिटिंग हेयर इज वेल मैं मैं ये कहूँ मैं मैं ये अर्ज करना चाहूँगा कि वी नीड टू रिकग्नाइज दिस दैट इट नीड्स टू बी ए कलेक्टिव एफर्ट इसमें इस का स्कूलों का पेरेंट्स का एज सोसाइटी इंडिविजुअल्स का सबका रोल है टू टू फॉर अस टू कॉम्बैट दिस चैलेंज एज वेल एज वेल एज अदर चैलेंज दैट कैन फ्रांस एंड आई एम प्रिटी प्रिटी ऑप्टोमिस्टिक दैट वी कैन वी कैन सर माउंट इट थैंक यू वेरी मच थी वॉज पॉइंटिंग टू विच रियली स्टूड आउट फ्रॉम योर डिस्कशन फ्रॉम योर टॉक इज दैट द करंट पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ इन एक्सेस ऑफ टू टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट is is a collective suicide there's no way we could go on uh, to live with a demography which has that high a population rate population growth rate uh, with a base of already 200 million in excess of 220 million people then when we went to uh, akhtar saab then we had very um, enlightened uh, slides i wish we had more time to go through your full slides so we will invite you just individually to give our students this discussion uh, this talk on on your policy but one th- thing that stood out your statement is education is the best contra- contraceptive uh um, which from the discussion at the end urish also was pointing to the fact that not just education but education link, linked with economic empowerment that that is the best way that women can decide on fertility decisions households family as a whole could uh, look towards having those children on which they can have also resources to put human um uh, human capital investment lack of data sets uh, is standing out uh, as a major issue in in analysis in rigorous analysis um sometimes we rely on qualitative analysis to draw out the uh, problems like divorce rate and and uh, and teenage marriages but we need systematic um, rigorous data set uh, in government college university we are setting up a new institute called institute of public policy and governance in that institute one of the arm of the institute would be to produce new data sets already we are talking about producing data set on aging and brain health so we will be open to the ideas and partnerships and collaborations that this institute of course this is a longer term process but few years from now we will say we started that process few years ago and now we could have the first wave of our data uh so we will be doing that um one thing from norish uh, presentation that stayed with me although you talked about the negatives of domestic violence workplace violence um and only 26% of the population of women population in the labor force um 
you made a very positive point that uh, we should not be looking at economic empowerment of women from a moral ground anymore. We should be looking at from economic viewpoint as well. If you want to become a developed uh, and a decent society, we would need to give equal opportunities to women. And then you provided us a figure that GDP will rise at least by 30% if we start giving equal opportunity to so women. Back the board, that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, then uh, we uh, came to the uh, to the talk of uh, Jawad Qureshi on Population Innovation Fund, and and we um, get to know how public-private partnership is helping uh, towards skill um, development and how their work is reaching masses, even masses uh, to the far-flung uh, areas. Um, I'm at the end, want to thank my panelists. Thank you so much for your, your contributions. Um, I want to also say a word of thanks to the uh, Consortium for Demo Development Policy Research uh, team, in particular Sharmin Arif, but also Hina Sheikh and Zara Salman. Thank you so much for this partnership. This is the first of many seminars we will organize together, hopefully next time in, in, in LAMS or in other forum, uh, but we are very happy to be part of this partnership. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, this is time for the souvenir distribution. I would request all our uh, esteemed guests to please come in front of the podium.